So now we're going to cover bowing in with the Boken. And while I'm here, I just want to explain a couple more things about the uh, uh, dojo atmosphere here at East Hanover. Um, we've got uh, meditation cushions here, Zabutan and Zafu. Okay? This is uh, some of our Hombo short staff. Okay? This is a Seiza bench made by one of our students years ago, where you sit in Seiza, slip that behind you, and you can sit down for your meditation. Uh, this banner, uh, people often ask me, what does that mean? I did this back in 1992 when we were moving into the Morristown Dojo and uh, people were working away. I had this fabric out. I just did this spontaneously. Um, my artistic uh, side wanted to come out. Uh, so when someone asked me, what does it mean? I just say, well, what does it mean to you? Uh, it doesn't mean anything. It's just an artistic expression my own uh, artistic nonsense. But uh, in looking at it afterwards, I realized it's a stylized light bulb. So, so appropriate to be above the students' heads, you know, during class, uh, aha moments, you know. So for what it's worth, um, uh, it has that meaning to me all this time and it still has a meaning in, here in the dojo. So as far as the bokeh goes, when we're bowing in, okay, Okay, I approach it with the uh, bokeh in the left hand, blade is up, holding it where the saya, the scabbard would be, not down here, okay? And not like that, okay? So curve is up, just below where the suba would be, okay? I approach, okay? Sometimes you might want to bow before you get onto the mat. So when you do your bow with the weapon, just like coming into the dojo, you're acknowledging that you're coming into the dojo with a weapon now, okay? coming into practice. You're acknowledging responsibility for that weapon and like bowing to a practice partner who can both help you and hurt you. Same thing with the weapon. You're bowing into this because it still has a life to it. Okay? It can help you or hurt you depending on your focus. Okay? These are wood. I look at it as these used to be living trees that were on this earth much longer than I'll ever be. And I still give respect to the tree that uh, this was and how it uh, uh, helps my practice to this day, still actively helping uh, the world the best I can do. So you bow with a little bit of a raise and a little bit of a, a bow for a sincere. Okay? Then if I'm gonna step on the mat, I'll do it the quick way. Okay, so it's at my hip, palm up, draw it out. Now it's in my palm or fingers, okay? Safely pass that by, set it to your right side, okay? The blade is facing towards me and the suba, the handle, okay? The guard uh, for the handle is even with my knees, okay? So it's not being hidden, it's still accessible, okay? Most aggressive would be actually right here, okay? So I can easily pick it up, okay? The blade is facing to the outside. I'd be able to pick it up okay, and draw right away, okay? So most peaceful blade is facing towards you. So the curve is this way, okay? Handle is out, okay? Then you can do your bow. When you pick it up, you can transfer it right over to your left okay, and then stand. Okay, and then you're ready for practice. <clears throat> this is a ready position. Okay, so once you're bowing to your partners, if you're doing partner practice, you would bow like that, not from here okay, and not from this position, okay, which is the most peaceful way of carrying around the sword, around the dojo. Okay. So generally speaking, generally speaking, I always say when in Rome, and don't, don't correct someone if they're doing it wrong. It's just different, right? So it's at my hip, I would bow to my partner, okay? And then follow all the other methodologies of going into Kamai, for instance, okay? Right. So that's bowing in with the Boken, with the Ken.